Thank you very much, Mr. Hosey. It is a pleasure to see you in the chair, and I beg to move that this House has considered the claimant experience of personal independence payments process. I am going to be really stingy with interventions, uh, and I can already feel like the wrath of my colleagues, <laughs> uh, but I have to because of the, the numbers of people that have put their name down to, to speak. I called this debate today on the claimant experience of personal independence payments because of the sheer volumes of casework in my constituency office receives regarding PIP. My constituents find many aspects of the process difficult, not because they're not capable, but because uh, the forms are confusing, the assessment procedure being very complex <coughs> and exhausting. There are more face-to-face -face consultations, more regular reviews, and more reassessments of awards and the preceding benefit disability living allowance. The initial impetus for this debate came from my constituents, but as soon as I asked for experiences on social media, I realised the huge scale of this issue in North West Durham and all over the country. I'm very grateful for our friend for giving way and congratulate you on securing uh, this debate. Would she agree with me that the government have made the situation significantly worse by passing a set of regulations in 2017 that have been found to be blatantly discriminatory against those who never had That's right. I agree, I, I, I agree strongly with that, that the ruling was a wake-up call for the government. I'll just, make a bit more, I'll just make a bit more progress. I asked people to comment and send emails about their experiences, and I was absolutely deluged. I received over 600 emails and 1,500 messages on Facebook and Twitter. Most of those people had taken, taken a great deal of time to tell me what had happened to them. Individually, they were shocking. Collectively, they shame the government and the Department for Work and Pensions because they are a testament to a broken and cruel system. I'll come back to those harrowing stories in just a second, but I'll start looking at the themes and I'll take that into For giving way, on the point that she mentioned, her Twitter appeal and etc. I mean, there is an official survey that shows that 76 percent of people in the system have responded that they are satisfied. So, while that while while that is not while that. While that, while that is not in itself a happy position to be in, it does show that to represent the average experience of people as being wholly negative is not representative of a scientific survey as opposed to a Twitter appeal. What an absolute joke that is. I mean, to, diminish, to diminish those experiences that, came, like, that made me weep oh, is an absolute disgrace. Those people took their time in extremely difficult circumstances to tell us of the difficulties of the system and to talk about another survey to try and diminish those experiences yeah. in the district. I won't be taking any more interventions. From Child Poverty Action Group's handbook on personal independence payments, it states that the government's case for replacing DLA uh, with PIP was that it had become an outdated benefit. I'm going to make progress. I have to make progress. Just give me a minute. DLA was criticised <coughs> for having complex and subjective criteria and inconsistent, inconsistent decision making, resulting in too many awards and too few reviews of awards. The government say that the PIP process is more active and an enabling benefit, and I, know, and I disagree in the strongest possible terms. The introduction of PIP is another cuts exercise. The coalition government made it a clear aim for the new benefit was the need to make savings. They said it themselves. According to the House of Commons Library, PIP was expected to reduce expenditure by 1.5 billion and by 2018, 607,000 fewer people were, rece were, were, re were receiving PIP. You don't achieve that kind of reduction without the anguish and suffering of it's thousands always difficult. of people. I think it's really difficult. It's an excellent speech. Um, let me share with her the experience of a constituent from Kirkby, a long-time claimant of DLA because of his PTSD, unable to leave the house, so he'd always had a home assessment. Since the last assessment, his wife now has terminal cancer. <laughs> Told, no, we won't do a home assessment this time. Isn't it a disgrace? Isn't it? Isn't it? Well, he was denied. He came to me. I sorted it out. They need to have humanity, compassion, and frankly, some common sense too. So, 
so, so common. The changes have hit those most in need of a security system whilst reducing the overall welfare budget and have taken away the safety net for a massive amount of people. When cost-cutting is the motivating factor behind changes, we hit trouble just as we've seen with universal credit. Let me just take you through some of those difficulties that my constituents and many people are making progress. There's, there's, there's 20 odd people down to speak. It's disrespectful going, yeah. to those people. Uh, yeah. The initial claimant form is often very daunting and time consuming. People are having to rely on already stretched services and support agencies to complete the form for them. At the same time, the questions are very restrictive and don't fit the descriptions of everyone's illness. Following this, claimants are invited to a medical assessment by outsourcing companies at Lost Healthcare or Capita Business Services, depending on their location in the United Kingdom. The accessibility of venues is cited often as a problem with claimants invited to assessments miles away from their homes and inaccessible rooms. Some say that that's a test from the outset. There have also been reports of assessments taking place in expensive gyms and spas in my area of the constituency, for example, making claimants feel on edge. And some people that are sure that they are filmed upon entering the assessment, and I believe them. There are extensive, extensive concerns I'll give with. I thank my honourable friend and thank you for bringing this debate here today. I have lost several members of my family to MND. It's a progressive disease. There is no cure. People do not get better. <coughs> Does my honourable friend agree with me that people with terminal illnesses, people with MND should not be up for reassessment? Yeah. Yeah. There are hundreds of stories of people who have conditions that are not going to change being reassessed and it's terrible. F the, the, um, there are extensive concerns about the suitability of PIP assessors. This was a clear theme throughout the correspondence, as they often don't have medical expertise to assess claimants with particular medical conditions. A midwife, for example, may be assessing a claimant with mental health problems. They don't know every sign and symptom of mental health conditions. They're not qualified. And that obviously brings into question the accuracy of the assessment that has taken place. Constituents of mine have told me how brutal and gruelling the medical processes, the assessments are, as it lays, lays bare the claimant's disability and how they cope with it. But this is done through a medical model of disability rather than through a social one. One person put it brilliantly to me when they said it was like a functionality test and that assessment does not capture or consider how that person can live their life each day. It's not questioned even that the assessors do not take notice of professional medical assessments from doctors or psychiatrists and this information is only being considered at tribunal stage. That's such a waste of energy, such a waste of energy for the person assembling the information at that stage, especially when doctors charge for medical assessment letters, a cost that should, in my view, be met by the state, not the person making the claim. I'll take one last intervention, I must press on. My honourable friend, would she not also agree that this cost that that piles up at tribunal is in part a function of a mandatory reconsideration system which again doesn't look at that additional evidence properly. That's right, I'll come on to mandatory reconsiderations in a second. The outsourcing of this process is very much part of the problem. 60% of assessment reports being completed by capita healthcare professionals and sent to the DWP were judged to be of an unacceptable standard. Neither capita <coughs> nor ATOS have ever never ever met the DWP contractual target that no more than 3% should be found unacceptable. I'm just wondering what it would take for those companies to lose a contract with this government. No action is taken because I believe this government is ideologically wedded to the outsourcing model despite such poor results. I've read incredibly that these companies pay bonuses for completing extra assessment reports which in my view incentivizes Russian and contributes to inaccuracies. Many feel like they have been lied about their, in their report, which is all part of the same inadequacies. I've even had reports of healthcare professionals who are conducting the assessment asking claimants if they've thought about killing themselves. Whilst I understand it's a difficult subject to broach, sensitive language needs to be used when dealing with such topics. Otherwise, it can be very damaging and triggering to that person. If a claimant isn't awarded the points that they think they're entitled to or told that they're not entitled to PIP, 
then they must challenge the decision of the DWP through a mandatory reconsideration. And constituents of mine and many people that have been in touch have said that this process is completely pointless due to the DWP not reviewing medical evidence or investigations whether the decision maker report is accurate or not. And actually DWP workers feeling um, not able to challenge the report of the, of the assessor. Advice and support agencies also state that there's hardly any people who have their decisions overturned at this stage and I can't help but think it's just another stage of the process to grind people into submission. If the mandatory reconsideration process is unsuccessful, the decision then must go to an independent tribunal, putting tribunal, tribunals across UK under enormous amounts of pressure, as well as claimants. Advice and support agencies say that they're under so much strain uh, trying to deal with the, the demand on people seeking representation. Latest figures show that 68% of PIP decisions are overturned on appeal, meaning that the DWP system is just clearly not working. And this is cl completely indefensible. All that trial and trauma for claimants to be proved right, and it's a big if if they get to go that distance. People have reported that they're waiting over a year for a tribunal date. What is very clear is that the assessment process is working against claimants entitled to the benefit. Many campaigners believe that the companies who provide medical assessments are heavily encouraged to hit targets by the government in order to cut the welfare budget. And I believe them, perhaps because there's an ambivalence towards these people, or more likely because they do not see it as the state's role to provide that support. I'll give one for that side, and that is it. I thank, I thank the Honourable Lady for, for giving way. Um, on some of the criticisms she's making in the assessment process, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with. Some of my constituents do face those challenges, and we'd be happy to work across the house to try and fix them. But yes. does she recognise that under PIP, we've now got 66% of claimants with mental health issues getting the higher rate of benefit versus 22% under the DLA? So can I just ask her for a little bit of balance yes. when she comes to yes. looking at this system, exactly. rather than just a whole right criticism? The whole well, the balance is hearing that there are thousands of people locked out of the system that never even get an award because they are so great down by the process. I think the government needs to realise what a cruel and callous system they're putting people through and the knock-on effect it has on our constituents. To be honest, I'm a bit shocked at the disbelief on the other side because if, you know, the, the, they're like kind of look, at, look and stunned that this has taken place. This is a, a reality for disabled people in, in this country. People are falling into further into depression, self-harm, having suicidal thoughts, becoming reliant on food banks. All of these things are harmful for our society. Losing their mobility cars was a consistent theme and falling into debt. It's also putting the NHS under much much strain at this point in time. I'll make a bit more progress. On the last seven years of, the, of this government, the Department for Work and Pension, I believe, has become uh, harsher and a colder organisation. A culture has grown through uh, successive secretaries of state, which sees claimants as numbers rather than people and fraudsters, instead of people with needs and a burden on the state rather than citizens with potential. The government's own figures of, of, of the rate of fraud for PIP come in at 1.4%. It's not even worth talking about. Yet the system is built on the presumption that people are lying and that they need to be found out. A symbol of this callousness from one of my constituents a few weeks ago who showed me a decision letter in my surgery telling her that she was no longer entitled to PIP, her lifeline, the letter was dated the 25th of December. Merry Christmas from the DWP. But that is far from the most shocking story. Over the last week, I've read several hundred testimonies from people who have suffered under this system. There is a whole community out there who has been frightened, mistreated and intimidated by the government, the media and the DWP itself. I'm just going to read a couple of those testimonies because they put things much better than me and I will draw to a conclusion. I hope that I can be made as uh, I hope that change can be made presently about this, uh, the PIP system because it's too brutal, rigid, and fair to people like me who want to live an, a, a life despite disability. Why are they treating disabled citizens as though we are undeserving of welfare support? 
I do not want to be in this situation. I'm not choosing this life or lifestyle. I'm a human being with feelings, emotions. I need help, support and understanding. Not to be ridiculed or made to feel like a criminal or a waste of space or a burden on society or that I'm going to be caught out at any opportunity for my disability. And this one to me was the most striking. That being on benefits is like being in an abusive relationship with the state. We cannot escape our abusers. We need them because we are financially dependent on them. So here is what I ask of the government. Remove the contract from Atos and Capital with the media federation step of the process. It is utterly pointless. Make the federation step of the process. It is utterly pointless. Make it compulsory to take medical documentation into account at the initial assessment for people to have to go through their medical their medical conditions in detail is, is traumatic and the evidence is already there from professionals. There must be consequences for an accurate assessment report about people's health conditions yes. and we should redesign the assessment process alongside da disabled people that accept a social model of disability, not a medical model of disability. I think the judgment against the government towards the end of the last year where a high court judge, as was mentioned, uh, said that the changes were blatantly discriminatory should give the minister pause for thought. It's an opportunity for reflection, isn't it? What has come not just become of not just this government, but of our society? When we treat people as criminals, as fraudsters for being disabled by society, do they know what fear, do they really know what fear is experienced across this nation at the clatter of the letterbox. People are scared that it is a brown envelope from the DWP. And I think it's time for the government, the government to admit that this system is a disaster and a review of PIP and the whole benefit system is urgently needed. Thank you. Thank you.